One of the most awaited models of this year, Gemini from Google has just arrived. And in this video, we're going to see some key highlights, at least like five important highlights from the technical report of Gemini 1.0 or version one model. Starting with what are these models? So first of all, this is a multimodal model. That means this model has capability to understand more than just text. So if you see the model, it can take four different modalities of input. It can take text, it can take audio, it can take images, and it can take videos. It can take all these modalities, and then this is still a transformer based architecture. And then it can output responses in images and also text like interleave text and images text with images. So this is the basic um, the modalities of Gemini model. Next, if we talk about the size of the model in itself, the model has three different sizes. One is an ultra size. The second one is a pro size and the third one is a nano size. If any of you are watching this video, there is one other company who has used all these three words in one of their products. I would like to know if you know and uh, just 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 uh, an Easter egg. So their nano model is the most efficient model that can run on device and they said it would run on even Google Pixel 8 Pro on device. It is two versions. One is the 8.1.8 billion nano one. The second one is 3.25 parameters nano two model. So these are respectively targeted at the low and high memory devices. And these are trained by distilling the larger models and it is also four bit quantized for deployment. So basically there is distillation happening and also quantization happening before being deployed on devices. And uh, the next level is the pro model. This is almost like the GPT 3.5 turbo equivalent model. So this is a model that has been optimized like somewhere between nano and ultra and their ultra is like their biggest model, the most capable model. And these ultra models are trained on TPUs, a tensor processing unit. This is something that that is Google's own computation. In terms of uh, the model uh, architecture in itself, this model, because this is a multimodal model and it is a, like a model that can take all these inputs like images, charts, screenshots, PDFs, videos, and because it can produce text and image, this model closely resembles or builds on top of the foundational work of Flamingo, which is a multimodal model from Google DeepMind. So it builds on Flamingo, Coca and Pali. So these are the multimodal models Google had already released and uh, Google DeepMind and this particular model Gemini builds on top of it. And the main distinctions that they wanted to highlight here is that this is a multi-model model from the beginning itself and it can natively output images using discrete image tokens. So typically what happens is these kind of special tokens are usually used when um, large language models are trained and those special tokens might indicate something. In this case, the model has got these image tokens to output images in itself. So that's why Gemini can actually generate images. We'll see a couple of examples later. And for video understanding, it has been accomplished by splitting the video into frames, sequence of frames into a large context window. And now that is an interesting question for us to answer. This model or Google Gemini model supports 32,000 context length. So this is, this is quite decent, not as amazing as 100K or 128K that are already available on uh, ChatGPT and uh, Claude and Anthropic Claude. But in this case, this is, 32,000 um, context window, which is I think quite good. And it also uses techniques like multi query attention that would uh, probably increase the inference speed of these models, which we have seen in the past, like with Mistral type of models, they do good job. The next thing that I wanted to highlight here is the training infrastructure in itself. Like we discussed, this particularly got trained on Google's in-house TPUs, tensor processing units, and you can see how they had the tensor processing units as super pods, uh, 4,096 chips. These are like really flexing. So for Gemini Ultra, we decided to retrain a small number of cubes per super pod to allow for hot standbys and rolling maintenance. So you can see like they've got like really, really, really uh, like a next level GPU cluster to be honest. And um, that is pro powered by tensor processing unit. The model, however, is not like um, a PyTorch model. So the single controller programming model of JAX and Pathways allow a single Python process to orchestrate 
the entire training run dramatically simplifying the development workflow so they had jacks uh, to run this on tpus uh, or tpu super pods to actually create the model in and itself and in terms of training data there is one key information that is buried deep down here that we find the data quality is critical to a highly performing model and believe that many interesting questions remain around the finding the optimal data set distribution for pre-training one the quality of input data matters heck lot the second one there are some interesting questions around finding the optimal data distribution for pre-training like what should be the proportion of something what should be the proportion of something else like for example if you have got books what should be the proportion of books code um, web documents like what kind of distribution that you want to have uh, that would make the output quality um, quite interesting and nice so data quality is very important that is something that we need to keep in mind the other thing is they did not get much into the data training data in itself like what did they use what kind of things that they used so it just says that uh, these are the types of data that are used like web documents books code images audio and video data and it also says that uh, it can efficiently tokenize non-latin script which means like anything other than english can also benefit from this and can also be tokenized using this approach which is kind of good in terms of evaluation like when i published my previous video a couple of you had highlighted one important aspect that i want to address to the best of my knowledge so google gemini ultra actually outperforms all existing models on mmlu which is a very popular um, benchmark with a 90.04 percent score now that 90.04 is not a zero shot score, rather it's a COT, a chain of thought with a 32 sample size score. Now, without getting into much detail of what it could be, one important thing for us to keep in mind that when they tested GPT-4, they also mentioned here very clearly that it is a chain of thought 32 sampled via api so this was one thing that was present in the technical report and a lot of you had pointed out at this point it was reported that the state of the art from gpt4 five shot is 86.4 while gemini ultra cot chain of thought at 32 sample is 90 percent but i don't know somehow they have messed up this thing i guess so here they have reported the five shot which is 86.4 and the co2 is 87.29 percent so still I mean, GPT-4 is lesser than Gemini Ultra, so uh, Gemini Ultra is actually better than that. I don't know why they did it, like they just wanted it to sound better. Um, it's it's honestly quite weird, given that they actually have beaten GPT-4. Anyways, that's the point. But I think in the five shot uh, setup, you can see that GPT-4 is better than Gemini Ultra. Gemini Ultra is 83.7 and uh, GPT-4 is 86.4 percent so with chain of thought it makes a difference without chain of thought it doesn't um, make a difference like gpt4 is still better something that you need to keep in mind but there are other benchmarks where you can see improvements especially with reasoning math and uh, the coding is the biggest i think jump i would say the human evil which is a very popular benchmark uh, for a coding task this is doing better and also natural to code gemini ultra is doing better one important information that we also covered in the previous video is that in terms of the coding competitive coding which uh, which they evaluated with code forces uh, you can see that alpha code 2 which is based on gemini this is on the 85th percentile this is like performing better than 85 percent of entrants so this is a significant advantage or uh, improvement over uh, alpha code which was like uh, at the 58th percentile so i think in terms of coding I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to see how this model is going to perform the other important information is that if you see human preference evaluation there is a there is a, like a quite a weird detail to be honest like for example the win rate of gemini pro over palm 2 is like this so you have got like creativity 65 percent this is the confidence interval safety 68 percent but the instruction following is just 60 percent and it's not like palm 2 is the best model huh? so you have had like gpt4 gpt4 turbo and all the other models so if the win rate of gemini pro over palm 2 is 60 percent i'm definitely curious to see what would be the win rate of 
Gemini Ultra versus um, um, like uh, GPT-4. But again, this is Gemini Pro, which will be deployed on the web for everybody to use it. Gemini Ultra is not available, going to be available anytime soon. And Google is going to release an advanced version of Google Bot, mostly subscription based with Gemini Ultra. So at this point, like our baseline, most of the cases is Gemini Pro, which is almost like the GPT 3.5 um, level. The other thing is the multimodal capability and not just that it can understand images well, it can understand video well, it can actually und uh, create images. For example, if you just say, give me two ideas that I could do with these two colors and you give blue color and yellow color, it can actually say that, okay, I see blue and yellow yarn. So you have blue and yellow yarn and it can say, okay, you can make a cute blue cat, it can, or a blue dog with ha which uh, which has an yellow ear and it can give you more ideas as well so it can understand the input and then it can do um, really good output in fact like to be honest like there are a bunch of videos that microsoft sorry google had put out in terms of the multimodal capability is stunning to be honest the multimodal capability is stunning even the very first example that they've given here is like here is a solution to a physics problem by a student and uh, the question is there, the answer is there, and you are asking Gemini Ultra to actually evaluate it and see whether it is right. So it understands the problem well, it understands the question well, it uh, transcribes and understands the solution well, and then it actually gives you that the student did not give the right answer. I think it opens up a huge amount of possibilities in terms of education. So overall, I guess like this is, uh, this is like really good. Um, there are a lot more details in terms of long context and multimodality voices and all the other things but i think the important details at least like for me is uh, the kind of architecture which we saw which is like uh, flamingo based architecture and in terms of uh, the benchmarks we had this clarification which was like a little confusing at the start and uh, the main thing is google ultra google gemini ultra is not going to come out anytime soon and it might take um, take a good amount of time uh, before it comes. And they're, they've said they're going to do the RLHF reinforcement learning with human feedback. And you can see that uh, it would probably take a bit of time for it to come. In terms of uh, training data, we don't have a lot of information on training data in, in itself. So we just have the type of data that they've used like books and all the other things. And one last information is in terms of training data beyond filtering, we also take steps to ensure all the data collected meets Google DeepMind's best practices on data enrichment developed by based on partnership, responsible sourcing of data enrichment services. This includes enrich ensuring all data enrichment workers are paid at least a local living wage. I, this was one of the complaints that was um, there about OpenAI that they had used labeling workers from Kenya and they were not paid well. So it seemed, I, I didn't know that uh, this partnership uh, thing, like something like a responsible sourcing of data enrichment service exists. And uh, it seems like Google is also, you know, uh, making a comment about this. So I'm kind of happy to see this, like especially as somebody who is, from a develop, developing country where there are a lot of data labeling works happening, a lot of uh, you know, Western countries come here for data labeling work. I'm happy to see this is being also reported. I guess like this is a good technical paper, except a lot of details about uh, the model in itself. We don't see a lot of detail about uh, uh, the training data in itself. And we also know that Google is not going to open source this model. I don't, I don't think anytime soon ever at all. Maybe the smaller models might come in, but um, the bigger models, I don't see any possibility given that this is touted as like the chat GPT competitor. I, I, after reading the technical paper, I'm a little skeptical that if this is like the way leap forward from GPT-4, but at least I'm very happy to see that we truly have a GPT-4 contender and that is going to be available for all the developers to use. Will you build any application on Gemini Ultra, Gemini Pro? Let me know in the comments.